Testing, testing. Oh shit, I could hear myself. That's okay, good. good. Okay, okay, sweet. Um, um, again, I might not pull up. Dude, how was your birthday? Happy, happy birthday. How was oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what did was, you do? It was good. It was good, man. Honestly, I, I'm getting close to the end of work, so I was like, you know what? Let's hold off on the birthday festivities, and um, we're gonna hold off until June 10th, and that's when we're gonna go out to SF. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Who are you gonna see again? We're gonna see Felix the house cat. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's that's gonna be exciting. Uh, what what all did I'm like just doing because I just did something pretty chill. I mean, it's in the middle of the week, so it's kind of hard. Well, actually, no, it's right after the holiday, right after Memorial Day. Yeah, so it, it fell on that Tuesday, mm -hmm. which sometimes I, you know, I'm lucky with Memorial Day weekend happening right around my birthday, so I usually plan something for that weekend. But I didn't really see anything going on too much, and I'm like, I don't want to just go out to go out. Right. And I was like, I'm gonna be a little selfish and tell people to hold off a bit, give me a week or two. Yeah. Find the right event and let's go out and have a good time. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, especially finishing up with like with work and everything. That reminds me too. Um Jacqueline mentioned she 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 might might be busy, but July second, uh, -huh. uh Cascade's doing a a, a, sh a set at the Midway. Is it the day party? Yeah, the July second. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah, I, I bought I bought I bought uh, early early bird <sighs> tickets for it. Um so that might, but but also there's a there's a sneaker event that same day too. So mm -hmm. I I don't know if it's a I don't know if I bought tickets for the day party or what. I just bought whatever tickets came up. Yeah. If it is a day party, fuck. I'm, I don't know if I should miss it or not because I haven't seen Cascade in a minute and I've been wanting to see Cascade. I was gonna ask. I think the tickets were like around fifty sixty bucks, right? Yeah, I think it was it was fifty dollars for the early bird. Yeah. And I imagine general admissions probably gonna be like sixty five or so since it's the midway. Uh huh. And I can't. I don't know what it's gonna be after that because it's it's the same thing. It's like tiered and stuff. Dude, yeah. Above me on was freaking there on Sunday. I had I had no idea. I Dude. I like found out the day off and I was like, damn, should I just should I buy tickets and just go? But I I don't know. At the midway too. Yeah. The midway has been legit when it comes to booking shit, especially all summer. Yeah. Like, if I go every weekend, I'm for sure gonna go broke. Like, yeah. It's that good. I mean, they're gonna do a Diplo uh, block party there too. I think I, I I think I saw ads for that too. Yeah. yeah, that looks legit. I think I might check that out. Um, I haven't figured that out, but Cas Cascade will be legit though. Man, it's been a minute since I actually like. I think the first time I saw him was in Vegas. I think I think that was my first time too. It might. I'm actually no, that's a lie. That might have been like back in. When they did Beyond Wonderland Bay Area in uh in oh, okay. actually, yeah no, at Shoreline, and that was when they started doing it. I think it was um, that was back when it was I guess Beyond Wonderland before it became out audio autistic or whatever it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was really good, and I've seen him. In, I've seen him at EEC, and the last time I saw him was New Year's because I think he actually usually does New Year's in SF, and he did it. I think going into twenty twenty or going into twenty nineteen, one of those two. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, he, he throws down a crazy set. I think I've seen at least three, four New Year's events, I think, in the last, what, 10 years or something that's yeah. been happening at SF. I wonder what brings him back here. Uh, there, there's actually a podcast episode he did with this guy named Tim Tim Ferriss. It was like a 30-minute long episode. It was really dope. He's, he's from Chicago. Okay. And some of his, when he first started blowing up, his one of his favorite places to come to was in SF. And and that that's the story behind that song 4 a.m. Yeah, um, the the song 4 a.m. apparently was about him like finishing up a show mm -hmm. in SF and then like walking down the street or something like that to get like waffles at this one particular oh, spot shit. down the okay. street from like Bill Graham or something like that. Yeah, yeah, really crazy. I loved I loved hearing that story. It was really cool. I highly recommend it. Uh -huh. He um, he's the one that like kind of helped me like reframe what what how I think about like approaching things like getting gigs, especially like, at mm -hmm. bars. What what he did, I think he he was he started out in Chicago. He was saying that um, how he first started getting his gigs was he would go to a bar, and he would hit up the managers, be like, okay, what 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 is your slowest day? Okay, let let yep. me let me DJ for free. I'll I'll pack the place. Like you don't gotta pay me anything. Just like let me play. Yeah. And that's what he did. He would call literally everyone he knows. Like just like did a bunch of advertising. He did all, all the work. They uh -huh. the bar did zero the zero work. Yeah. And they ended up profiting from it. And then because of that, then that he started building up their reputation, mm -hmm. got into other bars that like did the same exact thing. And mm -hmm. so once he started to get his name out there, then he started like raking in that money and started to show that he actually could make a living off of off of uh, DJing. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Sometimes you have to like think on your feet 
and figure out something that most people aren't doing because everyone's fighting for performing at a club, right? Mm. Especially the later times. Like, even, like, asking, hey, do you have anyone to open, like, at 9 p.m. when people are barely walking into the club? Like, uh. I'll do that. And sometimes you have to take that road in order to, like, make your way into, you know, success. And it reminds me of, uh, I think it was Daft Punk, what they would do is they would throw parties in random locations that were like mm -hmm. away from the city and a lot of the times they would throw these events on their own so they were able to make a name out of that because people identified with the scene that they were trying to create they didn't have to like adhere to any of the bar rules or anything like that it's just like let's bring our energy and make something happen that makes sense, you know, dude. That that's pretty sick. Are, are, have you thought about doing anything like that for like teaching, especially now in the summer too? Since like if you're gonna leave teaching, like that might be, dude. Just throwing, just like just hitting up bars, like hey, what 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 are your slower nights? Like you guys looking for a DJ? Like I'll 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 bring people, like just yeah, something. So my idea was to eventually start uh, taking on some like Sunday gigs, like Sunday day parties. Oh, okay, that'd be sick. Um, I know a couple bars I'm trying to hit up to do that but i will say the whole like trying to find your own location without getting busted is pretty hard in san jose yeah i bet i don't think there's really any location out here that comes to mind where you could pull that off unless you go towards like mount hamilton but mm. that's like gonna be really random i don't know if people really want to drive up those steep hills yeah especially if you're trying to drink and like <laughs> chill out to you yeah, that's true oh yeah i could see a lot of shit happening if i try to throw a party there yeah. i don't want that on my name or my conscience you know so i'm like i'll leave it alone but um i do see myself trying to get into like the sunday day things because i think people they want to do things during the sundays but they don't know what to do or where to go so they just go to regular bars so i'm like if we could make a bar pop and make people want to come to it, then I think that will help me prove to the people that, like, hey, give me a Saturday night. Give me a Friday night. That's smart. Yeah, because uh, when I was in New York, we were looking at things to do, like, on Sundays and stuff like that. Or just, just try to plan something every single day that outside of sightseeing. Yeah. And there, I can't tell you how many places they, there were on, what, what is it, not Ticketmaster, Eventbrite that were like Sunday brunch and there was like just tons of Sunday brunches where they had like bottomless mimosas, chicken mm -hmm. and waffles, um, and a live DJ and stuff like that. I was like, that mm -hmm. sounds like a lot of fun. Like I would love to do something like that, but like it just, uh, I'm surprised I have never heard of anything that here, I mean, definitely not in South Bay cause South Bay is a little bit slower, but like even up in SF, like I, I maybe I could just be completely ignorant mm -hmm. to that stuff. But uh, also like, that sounds like a lot of fun. I think they're starting to catch up here. Funny that you mentioned that cause it just came to mind. I actually know a friend that might help me get into that at nice. one point. Um, it's not for sure yet, but you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. So they told me if you can get your, like, social media going and start, like, putting videos and mixes up, which I'm working my way around, um, that they can try, you know, she could recommend me for that type of gig and... I'm not saying that's what I want to do forever. I don't want to be the brunch DJ. Yeah, uh, but but but, but I, I think I think just fi finding ways to put put your pay your dues, so yeah. to speak. I think I think that's I think that's kind of what it is. Um, that's yeah. That 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 sounds like a lot of fun. Honestly, what I was imagining too would be kind of sick. Is just like a venue and then like tons of like food trucks of like different kinds of foods mm -hmm. for like brunch. Yeah, and then like a bar or 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 a brewery that just has like the bottomless drinks or something like that and then just uh, having a dj there would be yeah sick. Uh, i'm trying to think i think it's camino brewing have you yeah. heard of that it's on first street i think so so they're definitely starting to do i mean it's no bottom mimosa it's still a beer beer bar right but they're definitely bringing in djs for that kind of stuff um i do hesitate a little bit when it comes to like beer bars to dj for because i feel like people who are drinking beer and solely only beer they're not really trying to like they're not trying to turn up yeah they're not know, trying to turn true. up or party and i think i know my crowd i know what i can bring to the table yeah and i definitely want that um but at the end of the day it's like beggars can't be choosers you got to start somewhere yeah that's true and i think they were saying that at one point they might want to expand and do something else so it's like if you get your foot in the door and something else happens because they decide hey 
we want to push this to the next level and you've been around this whole time let's bring you let's bring you on to what we're trying to do yeah yeah it, so, it's it's businesses that want that need to do the the proof of concept first to sh show show us there there's a there's money to be made in this and entertainment and stuff like that and then mm -hmm. and then let's fucking roll with it yeah cool with that in mind let's fucking start the show what up everyone welcome back for another episode of kick talk with me, Edgar from Smart Kicks, and today I'm joined by Andrew. What's up, man? How's it going? Good, good, man. How are you doing? Fantastic. Uh, you got any got any uh, re any any recent pickups this the past uh, couple weeks or so? I actually don't. No. I know. I don't have a recent pickup, but I do have a couple sneakers I'm eyeing. Mm -hmm. uh, I know last time I, I mentioned how the Air Max 95 didn't have any really good uh, colorways. Right. But uh, there was definitely one that I have my eyes on and. Maybe at one point I'll, I'll bring it up so that way y'all can see or, or know what it is. Because I'm not going to lie. I, it's it's not like a well-known colorway. Right. Like, but um, there is that. And then there's a pair of, like, hiking New Balances that I was having my eye on that I saw on Hypebeast the other day. And I'm like, okay, I might pull the trigger on that. But other than that, no recent pickups. But I do have a couple things in mind. Hmm. I actually have a recent pickup that I wanted to show. So I got I, I got very lucky off of uh, off of undefeated. I was able to get a pair of the um, the Hello Kitty Prestos, mm -hmm. and everything about them like I love, like just how far they actually went with the collaboration. Like yeah. it's, it's very rare that I actually see collaborations like really um, do everything like from box to tissue paper to the actual shoe itself. Mm -hmm. And this one like definitely did it for me. So so go ahead and take a look at them. So uh on this box, like they have like the 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 swoosh, it's like that university blue color for the Hello yeah, Kitty, yeah, yeah. and it's got the bow over it. Mm -hmm. And I, I love like the cartoony sort of lines of like the box, but go ahead and I'll open it up and just take a look, dude. They're they're really I was very, very impressed with them. I mean, already just kind of like looking at the box, you could tell this is gonna be a really good Yeah, thing. like yeah, they're sick. Yeah. I mean the details it's the devil's in the details, and I think when it comes down to what I see here. Um, I mean, no, yeah, everything from the tissue paper down to, well, I haven't seen the actual sneaker yet, so we're getting there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of times they don't really put a lot of effort into the box anymore. No. I, I realized that back then, especially with like a lot of the Jordans that were going on, when you, even when you'd have the packaging for the two Jordan packs, remember how back in the day they would do that? Yes. That dude, th those, like, I, I remember I was at, I was at Soul Supremacy uh shout out to all supremacy here in the here in the bay area and i was actually there selling some sneakers and they had a couple boxes there i was like what is that and, and I, it was like a huge box really really detailed i was like what is that oh this is for the jordan pack whatever whatever uh -huh. and i was like dude that like i wish they put that level of detail in, into sneakers nowadays too oh um, shit i'm looking like at the inside yeah dude, dude yeah the insoles everything it's yeah. got it's got the rainbow insoles with like it's got the teal with like the <laughs> rainbow colored insoles and the one thing i was like tripping about yeah. what, prior to getting these was that I wasn't sure what the texture was going to be like for the actual um for the actual sneaker itself like I wasn't sure if it was going to be like a like an embroidered on mm -hmm. the Hello Kitty faces and then also too the little toe box like kind of reflector thingy the, yeah. the plastic um did you ever see the that the pack of what was it called it was the off-white fuck what was it it was the Prestos the acronym Presto collaboration. Oh, okay. So when they did the like the one they with did, the highlighter colors yep, and yep. yeah, I know you're talking about yeah, the three they, pack. Yeah, they did a three pack of those. So for for the actual toe bo toe portion of it, that hard plastic part, the print that was on there came off really really easy, and it bothered the shit out of me mm -hmm. because it was really cool print and pattern on those on those um, on those Prestos, and that's what I was worried about for this one. But this is actually like a really thick clear. Um, plastic that lets you see the material through it so even if it gets scratches up it's like not a design that's just gonna get um it's oh, okay yeah it, it's not something that's just gonna like end up like yeah like that's gonna end mm -hmm. up just like freaking uh getting super scratched up and even just like the heel like look at that they've got the yeah. hello kitty ears everything isn't that crazy so the funny thing is when i'm looking at the shoe the first thing yeah i saw the insole i looked around it you said the fabric i started looking at the fabric and feeling it 
And that was the last thing, and I was like, I think that's the best detail of the shoe. Isn't it? Yeah. The, the fact that, like... The little heel cup? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah, just su super subtle. Like, you would almost miss it, too. Mm -hmm. And, like, e even, like, the, the, the sock liner part of it is, like, a nice, like, what is it, like, a velvet or something like that? Oh, you're right, you're right, yeah. A little bit like a crushed velvet or something. Yeah, and, but, yeah, that's gonna say, the, the one thing that does kill me, like I've mentioned, too, is just, um... It is just for Prestos, like how how they don't how they only come in whole sizes, so you mm -hmm. have to either size up or side down and just risk it. For the acronym Prestos, I I sized up to a size ten instead of a nine and a half, which is I usually wear, mm -hmm. and and I, I realized like that it was just too much. Like the the Prestos themselves are actually pretty roomy, so the nine was like perfect yeah. for me. Yeah. At that point, your your shoe's gonna crease because you have so much space. You really need to fill out the press in order to make it work. Well, and also too, because like the Prestos, like they're one of the more most comfortable shoes I have, mm -hmm. and it sucks when uh, when they're too when they're too loose. Your foot also moves around, and you get blisters too, which also yeah. blows. I will say though, so I guess my question is, when it comes to a sneaker like this, what are your thoughts on like why you got the sneaker? What's your intention with it? Because this is like a very niche cop, right? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you're going to be wearing these to the supermarket or... I, I don't know, though. <laughs> I, I might, because even then the resale... Uh, so they don't officially release until the 10th. Uh -huh. And the resale actually doesn't look too bad. And I, I, I can't imagine they'll go that for that much over retail. Yeah. I just... Like, this is just such a nice color in general that I think... Just wearing this and like, and if another mm. sneakerhead sees that, there's like that guy, that guy, like that guy's into sneakers. Like this yeah. is a, like most people will just be like, oh, that's that's fucking weird. Like some thirty year old fucking Mexican <laughs> guy wearing wearing Hello Kitty sneakers. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is just like kind of one of those sneakers that like, you see and like that person, like you know that person's into sneakers. I I'm, yeah. I'm gonna for sure wear these. I love any Prestos that I get mm. my hands on because they're so comfortable. But like, yeah, dude, th th these are these are one of those for sure. And I was going to say, too, I mean, it's a summer, so, I mean, it's a very breathable shoe. At the end of the day, a light color shoe in the summer is something that, like... And, and this blue color, too. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, um, the only reason I say it is because when it comes to shoes like this, I always think of, like, the collectability of it mm -hmm. and whether people want to, like, hold this kind of stuff. Because maybe, like, in the next two, three years, yeah, it's not going to go that much higher. Yeah, that's very true. Depending on, like, the stock and what mm -hmm. numbers they figure out once it releases. Um, but 10, 15 years from now when people are like, what the hell? Nike did this? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and it gets, and yeah, and it makes me excited to see that like there are companies that are willing to go that far for a collab. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's just because like the, the name or just Hello Kitty themselves, like they're such a, probably a huge company or an organization. Like, I, yeah, yeah it, it's pretty sick. That That's my recent pickup. And I'm, I'm pretty stoked on these. It just, just the color itself too. Like. I've seen so many more sneakers in this same sort of color, which is mm -hmm. like the what's it called, the university blue sort of like light blue color, mm -hmm. and I love it, and I'm I'm glad because that's so this will be a really nice, uh, really nice summer shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So, so what what, what do you got on feet today? Today I have a collab between, so it's New Balance and I believe it's Concept. No, Bodega. 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 Okay. So Bodega is a sneaker. It's not a sneaker shop, actually. It's more like a sneaker slash fashion shop. And uh, yeah, they recently did this pair of 990s. Here, I'll take them off. Those are sick. And I love that one. It's a tonal shoe. Don't worry when I say that they're a bit beat up. Because uh, I've worn them quite a bit when it comes to like events and stuff, but yeah. I love the blue lining on the top uh, For the most part, I think this is a shoe that goes with a lot of outfits um, Definitely has been worn quite a bit, but for the most part if I clean these up like You know, no one's gonna really be able to tell. Yeah, no, they're, they're pretty nice too Yeah, those, those can definitely take a beating and especially going to things like festivals like that's what I'm kind of thinking about this summer too. like what place what shows do I want to go to and also like um What's gonna actually like last during that time too? Yeah, I, I've got I've got my 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 Yeezy Crocs, my uh, Vermilion ones, these foam runners, dude. They're they're actually super super comfortable. I, yeah. I love wearing these. Um, and I have I have two I actually have two pairs of these. These are my outdoor ones, and my other ones mm -hmm. are my like indoor house ones. Um, and my feet gets really warm, like just in general. So mm -hmm. I like that these are super breathable. But like a hundred percent, like I've. When we went to Texas and whatever, like these were my airport shoes. Like they're so 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 comfortable. But outside mm -hmm. of that, like, I don't know. There, people some some people think they're a bit of an eyesore. I 
tend to kind of agree. Like they're 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 definitely uh they're definitely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna ask, and this might be a weird question, but do your feet ever get sweaty in them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just need to know. No, they they, they definitely do, and okay. that and that's the one, yeah, and and I think with all the whole like my feet get sweaty, I think just just <laughs> it, it just period. Yeah. Okay. Which yeah, which doesn't make sense because I feel like my feet are always like feel feel like they're really dry. But yeah, yeah. Um, no, they they do get sweaty, but uh, yeah, the the whole all the holes definitely help. And I don't I don't wear them as socks. Like I'm, I just I think oh, that's, yeah. that's doing too much. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I get it. Maybe if you're wearing like a log pant, but if it's summer, you got your shorts on. Like, dude, just wear them sockless, dude. Like, yeah. Like when people wear Birkenstocks with their socks, sometimes I'll do it and I get it. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm like, there's no better feeling than to take your socks off and wear those shoes. You yeah. Know? And I know to each their own. Everyone has their preference, but I, I, I'm all with it. You know. Yeah, and and that's why I'm kind of in glad too. Like especially with these, like I've gotten used to it, and my my feet don't move around or anything at all. Like they they um they don't like I I imagine because if I was gonna go sockless, then I was gonna have like some like irritation points. But actually, mm-hmm. these have been these have been perfect. Okay. Um. So speaking of which. Uh, unrelated, but there's been a ton of Jordan Two collabs that I I feel like for me have seemingly come out of nowhere. Like yeah. this morning, they had the Amaminir, uh Jordan Two. I, I I I didn't know they were drop. They didn't know they were dropping, so I just got the notification on the Jordan app. Mm. There's a J Balvin collab that's coming up too. Is that this week though? Th- this, the this, this this was this morning. This morning, yeah, it came out. Okay. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. So they already sold out. I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, yes, they're very sold out. Yeah, I try. I tried getting them to it, and uh, or I mean, I I woke up like at eight fifteen, and then uh-huh. I saw the notification was like silence, and by the time I checked, it, yeah, these are these are these have been sold out. How, how lucky do you get on the on the sneaker app? Uh, like very unlucky. Like if you get the, I don't know, out of a hundred times that you tried, maybe five. Okay. Maybe five. Yeah. But yeah, I so I've been seeing uh. This Jordan two, the Union, the both other two Union twos yeah. that released, those were pretty sick, but like I, I don't I, I don't know if Jordan twos are slept on or if they're overhyped because the collaborations that they've been doing are with bigger names, but yeah, like the these don't really speak to me. Like I think the this black. The black so sole like with the white skin, yeah, it, or it it's lo- textured for sure. It's, yeah, it looks it's some texture, but with this contrast of this white, yeah, it almost looks like a like a like a boot or like a like a dress shoe. Yeah, I myself have a hard time wearing shoes that have like black soles because mm. I think sometimes, like let's say you're wearing a light outfit, mm-hmm. and this is mostly like a gray tonal shoe, right? Yeah. And let's say it goes with the outfit, the black will give like a contrast that might conflict with the other parts of what you're wearing. So personally, I I, I don't love these. They're, they're not bad. Don't get me wrong. No, I feel no, like no. if I saw them in person, it'd be different. You yeah. Know? But it also looks like it's got the cracked leather like the like the ones like have the Jordan too. one. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I have heard very mixed things about them. I, I'm personally like I, I've seen it. It's the same thing as the the, the Jordan four top haze. The the brown ones the, with the cracked leather and yeah. the black sole, yeah, same sort of material. And I've heard it's actually not that great in hand, but like it's it 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 kind of blows my mind. And I'm actually really glad that I have the threes because the threes seem drastically different in terms of like quality mm-hmm. and how great they look compared to the ones and yeah. these twos. Is it just me or is it a little too quick that we're just kind of moving from one Almanier to this one to this one? And it's almost kind of like. Yeah, they, yeah, a little they, too much, and the fact that they're also kind of repeating the same colorway for the ones. Yeah, just just kind of doesn't do it for me, you know. When I see these, I'm like, well, if I didn't want the ones, I'm not gonna want these, you know. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but what, I and I guess too with like out uh, with a uh, with the sneaker culture, like these sold out. Were like they were gonna sell out regardless, yeah, because, because of the name. That like I I don't I don't. Like I think I think they're they're I, I don't know it just feels like a like a cash grab like they're just doing it just to make money I mean which I get it they're a business but like it it, it this the the ones came out not even that long ago and uh, I don't know I I didn't really like them but uh, yeah I'm glad we were both able to get the threes too I mean I'm all for I'm a manier and what they do I feel I, I don't know if I'm gonna butcher this but I think it's a female led brand and it it might be let's look it up let's yeah let's just double check real quick. And I'm not saying that's the reason why I buy into it. I think for the most part, the design of the three is 
one that's going to go down in history as a collab for a three that actually worked. Um, let's see here. Scroll. Do they have an about? Uh, do they have an about? Hmm. Got some random fucking links at the bottom. Eats living hand wash cold editorials. What the fuck? Let's go to the hand wash cold and see what's there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not joking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. No, they don't. There's nothing really. What the fuck? So should I just Wikipedia this? Just, like, what yeah. The fuck? Yeah. Just put. I'm on my near. Let's see. Oh, here we go. About us. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh. Translated as my way in French embodies the idea that individuals are influenced by their culture. Our, our boutique is designed to represent and inspire a fashion-forward clientele deeply rooted within their community. The retail experience offers trends and styles from the most coveted brands in luxury streetwear and footwear. We re represent quality, exclusivity, and the capacity to express honesty through brand integrity. Um, that's is that really well, is that really an about us? That's more of like what we're doing, it's but like not, mission statement, right? Yeah, but inspired, yeah. Well, the reason I'm saying it because I think the three was only in women's sizes. I think that's why they... Yeah. That's what it was, but... I... I be, yeah, because the, the whole name of the shoe was, like, raised by women, Jordan 3s, and, like, the shoelaces yeah. have some other stuff, and I think there's, like, stitching on the inside. I, I forget what all details are on there, but... So, so you, yeah, you're right on, on this. So, it, it wasn't a brand that was started by women, but it was about celebration of that you know okay and okay I, I can see that that's cool yeah so well that was what the three was all about i think everything else after that was kind of like let's go back to the whole unisex thing and just kind of make the shoe all gender but yeah what's hilarious though is that i haven't seen a single woman wear a pair of those it's all even dudes yeah <laughs> that's true because they're the ones that are buying it out yeah dude i haven't seen a single woman wear a pair of those um but I, I don't, yeah cool yeah good, good for them all right sick well um so it's june it's pride month we got a whole month to celebrate pride yeah. let's talk about some um some sneakers wait Th is that for this year uh no uh no these are just these are just pride sneakers oh, in this general is from 2012 okay yeah this this these are just sneakers that i found that like it was on a page about talking yeah. about pride um these nike flight races which i i never it never it never uh clicked in my mind that these were pride shoes mm -hmm. which is kind of stupid of me because it's literally a rainbow swoosh Be but it, it's pretty subtle too and because it's the flight knit, there's a lot more porous holes like you can't really I, I don't know they're pretty sick i like them i think for a low-key let's put the rainbow print on something it's not the worst sneaker i've seen this on yeah yeah but i get it it's kind of you, you just use the lunars how often can you really wear rainbow stuff though like the, the, Those are actually not bad. The, yeah, these the, New Balance the 327s. The, the 327s, These, I, I, I really like these. I would, I would have these in my, in my, in my collection. But I think at first glance, they don't look like a pride shoe to me. They you don't. Know? But, but, but that's a good thing. Yeah, that's but, a good thing yeah. because they don't look like the generic pride shoe that other brands are making. It, exactly. You know? Yeah, it's kind of like what we were talking about before we started recording. Like, does everyone really want do do? Do people who celebrate Pride, do they really yeah. want just everything rainbow for everything? Like, if yeah. you're doing a Pride sneaker, does it have to be rainbow? I mean, every I think every brand has basically created their own, like, Pride collection all the way down to H&M. So it becomes yeah oversaturated, one. That and then, two, true. you got to ask yourself, are you really giving the community that you're trying to represent in these collections what they want or what you think you're celebrating in order to make a buck out of it? That's very true. Um, yeah, that that's true. Yeah, it, I think there are other. I, I mean, I if, if I were tasked with creating a shoe, I feel like I could do it. Um, but yeah, I, th this this one's cool. I'll I'll give this one a I'll give this one a thumbs up. As in, I I would cop this. What about you? Yeah, I actually really like it. Yeah. I mean, I'm also what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. Is the other side reflective of the same colors as the side we see on the right, though? No, because if you look at this toe, this one's black, and this part of it right here is like a teal. So yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's like I think it's like a like a like two different shoes, but the yes. same. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that, but for the shoe, I think it works. The, the mismatch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next one, Air Max uh, Air Max Nineties B Trues. These I I kind of like these these actually and so these ones actually do do match, and yeah they they're they're colorful though not overly 
like kind of in your face except yeah. the, the rainbow switch it's got like that kind of like a the what's it called like a sort of tracer on on the nike mm -hmm. uh on, on the swoosh itself that's got like that what is it, like an embroidered swoosh that's kind of that's kind of cool yeah, yeah yeah i was gonna say i think the color blocking is not bad um it's a very playful shoe that's what I think what makes it work. Yeah. Is it the kind of shoe that most people are going to wear? I mean, it all depends on you, but it's definitely a playful shoe that I think if you could work it out, then cool, but it's also a hard shoe, I think, to pull off. You yeah. Because of it almost looks like a kid's toy if you look at the color blocking with the yellow. That's and, true. You yeah. know, it, very saturated colors, but for the most part, it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, would I cop this shoe? Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Oh, I, I, I it, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Wait, Adidas Pride Superstar Pride Pack. Is that what it looks like? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. This feels kind of lazy. Yeah. I I think that's kind of what we're getting at is that y you see this done many times. They just take a generic shoe and they splash the print over it mm. and they kind of expect it to be groundbreaking because it's happening for the reason it's happening but am i seeing actually now i think about it do you even see people wear these type of shoes in public like maybe once at like pride fest in sf yeah but other than that th yeah this isn't something you could like reach for every day i guess yeah no. yeah i i yeah this feels lazy uh so that's me uh these Reebok Classic Leather Pride. These are kind of sick. It's the stitching is rainbow, right? I, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think, yeah, now that you're zooming in, you can see it. Yeah, damn, that's pretty sick. That, honestly, that for me, that's really clean, super subtle, not super in your face. And I think yeah. with this, like, Reebok, like, with these shoes, like, these look like, like a nice everyday shoe. Uh-huh. And I don't know. Th this is pretty nice. And then the little Reebok, this little like flag. Next, I think. I think. Is that yeah. The, yeah. It's, it's a little flag right there. Yeah. A little rainbow flag. I think and that's cool. I, I don't. Yeah. Like, I don't mind it. Yeah. I think it's definitely wearable. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It's not a bad shoe. Yeah. I think, it's pretty sick. Yeah. All right. Um, these do are probably my favorite. I did not even know these were pride shoes. These are uh, uh, e even just independent of that. These nine ninety sevens. These are sick. Yeah. These are really, really dope. I actually yeah. might buy these once we get off this. <laughs> you know what, though? Um, Go on StockX real quick and see what they look like. Because w what's the price? Because back then, that was, what, 2019 when these came out? Yeah. So put Todd Snyder, Love, 19. Yeah, there we go. Do we see them? Yeah. Is it these? Y yep. Right now... Last sale was five hundred. For my size, oh fuck, they're not. They're not yeah, even there's, there's barely any sizes left. Damn. Damn. I'll have to I'll have to look on things like Grail and stuff like that. Uh, dude, honestly, these are really nice. And you and if you look at the get the fucking out of here. If you look at the uh, like even the the tongue tag, mm -hmm. it's even got like rainbow stitching on it. Yeah. But like, dude, the, these leather cuts like this this these nice like suede panels are such nice like softer oh yeah softer tones damn these are I, cool. I think new balance really gets down with how good quality they provide for their their sneakers when it comes to suede yeah like you could tell right off the picture you know the, or the image itself that it's going to be a good shoe yeah you know? and it's constructed well um i think even in the back they have a little bit of stitch detailing too when you turned it around earlier, right about uh, there. Oh yeah, same as the tongue. And the thing is, it's not. It's subtle. I think it's it does its job right without having to be overly loud. And yeah. I think for the most part, it's a very wearable sneaker. You know what they did really well about this too? Yeah. So for the different colors, so it's got a mix of colors, but they group them well. Like the 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 heavier red pinkish tones are in the heel so it's like they've got that contrast like it's like it's like a nice light pastel sort of pink yeah with like a more like darker salmon like a sort brick of. yeah like, yeah exactly color, like a nice yeah. brick red on, on on the on the collar and then the the this quarter like panel a, like here a is like sage a, green yeah to a, to a lighter blue light blue like they they organized it very well versus like if we go back to this this oh, uh gosh. this one this is this air max 90 
that Nike did, this is just all over the place. Like, this doesn't have that, like, thoughtful process yeah. that makes and, it look and good. he's, like, wearing, what, jeans with them? Like, yeah, dude. This uh, like, and this, and this, this did, didn't get the, the pin tuck. You know what I could see these shoes be more with? Just, um, like, suede, uh, sorry, gray sweatpants. Gray sweatpants. That are rolled up, you know, like the old school style. Yeah. And then maybe just, like, a white tee or something. Yeah, and I then, mean. And you just let the shoe speak for itself. Yeah, and right? you, you kind of have to for, for a shoe like that. Yeah. Versus this uh, New Balance. Like, this is such a good-looking shoe that, like, Dude, yeah, this is clean. This is a hundred percent. I would, I would love to yeah. get this shoe. I would say if you're trying to get one, you should get one now because the sizes from what we saw in StockX. Well, and even too, because, selling because, out. because it's June now, because it's Pride. Like I, I imagine people are searching for like shoes for Pride or just in general. Like yeah, yeah, I am a hundred percent. I think right. yeah, and in general, it's a good shoe to have for sure. Okay, um, so the next one, this one, the Nike Air Force One B Trues. Uh, it looks like, it looks like it's like a like a sort of there's like a semi-reflective film on the so so it's a white Air Max one yeah with like a semi-reflective sort of swoosh that's got like the deep the sort of like rainbow stitching along the swoosh but it's kind of like tucked and then it looks, looks like the heel the heel part of it it has like a rainbow sort of um flag on yeah. it and then it's got the, where the air is on the on the on the midsole there's like a little swoosh with the little rainbow yeah this is kind of nice too this is this is still relatively subtle i have a hard time with the texture of the leather though i think it's very does, does it look like a lot yeah it, it looks like a lot for for what it's trying to be it, you know it, it could be the picture though because i think i think this is a tumbled leather which will be a little mm. bit softer it doesn't yeah. look as nice out of the box as like the nice smoother leather but this yeah. one will actually be a lot better when it t- when it comes to wear yeah, I mean the leather does look like it's at least better quality than what you're getting from your regular That's Air Force very One. True. But for the most part, I don't know these sh- these shoes don't really do it for me in terms of like creativity slash originality. It just kind of it's kind it's kind it's kind it's, 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 it's a shoe. It's a better version of the superstar that we saw earlier. Yeah. Okay. Like it, it, let's just slap it on, but yeah, it doesn't look as bad as the other one. I I would consider these uh, these are a maybe for me. And now I'm the, now that I'm noticing, so this midsole it's not the normal Air Force One midsole. This is like a clear white translucent midsole. Yeah. So I think as you wear this one, this will yellow and oxidize a bit more, which yep. might look kind of cool. But I'd, I'd have to see pictures. But uh, yeah, that, that's a maybe for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, the Adidas Oswego. Yeah. I, I can't with the shoe. No. The silhouette. I think. It, well, one. I think. The rainbow soul is probably one of the most terrible things I've seen yeah, this so is, far on this page. Yeah, but dude, this is not this, this is not shoe. It. It's kind of like that. Let's be that futuristic type of sneaker, and I and I just I think it had its moment, and it's not here to stay for any longer. You I, know, I've seen some outfits that I've liked with this. Yeah. Well, or sorry, with, with the with the uh, Oswegos, but these are just so bad i don't like them oh no damn adidas fucking swing. Yeah, those, yeah. Another o- swing and a miss. two right now yeah, dude, swing and a miss all right uh converse all-star pride packs which i actually didn't even know that um which uh, which sounds dumb but like yeah that converse is owned by nike was acquired by nike at some point yeah i, don't know I think was. in the last like what three four years it happened yeah because i i mean I, I i always thought it was weird but never questioned it like why do, why does uh why does nike and adidas or sorry why does nike and converse like why do they do the off-white collab that doesn't make any sense but obviously that makes yeah. much more sense now it was around them. that time for sure i think within a year or two of that happening they acquired it it's kind of like adidas acquiring reebok right yeah that's true they had him for a while i think they sold reebok though from what i remember yes i think I but think so. i mean don't 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 quote me on that one but the idea is that yeah they own converse and i think ever since that happened converse have been taken a lot more seriously yeah in terms of not just the collaborations but the quality that they're putting in their shoes um i, I think converse is here to stay and is always going to be a staple in the culture and how people like to wear them. You don't have to be a sneakerhead to wear Converse. Yeah. You know, you could just literally be someone that just wants a good pair of shoes. Yeah. Um, the, clean. These are the Chuck 70s though, right? I think. Yeah, I think so. And so, and so it's a, it's a plain black Chuck with, uh, like, I think it's got like, it's like patches and it's got a Converse with like a rainbow and like the peace yeah. sign. Uh, this, this could very easily be like a mix of like 70s sort of aesthetic or pride. But, um, I, I, 
That the heel, what is, what is that? It's like a whole like furry stitching, rainbow stitching on the heel. Yeah, I don't know. No, I'm not I'm not feeling I, these. I just feel like the imagery comes up with a bit cringe, you know, for yeah. what it's trying to be. It's like, all right, I get it, but at the same time, it's like, is this what people really want? You know, uh, I'm I'm hit, I'm going. I with mean, it's as far out no. on the left. Like, yeah. What what does that have to speak to? Yeah. What is what, what is it's that, what trying is, to celebrate? What does that have to do with? Yeah. What does that have to do with pride? Yeah. I'm just very confused by and the peace sign. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, I'm saying. saying that, that, that's like, it could very easily be like '70s aesthetic. This doesn't yeah. feel like a pride shoe. Well, see, look, dude. See, Nike can drop. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not feeling this. No. Um, I think so far New Balance is. Oh, the, these are just. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, these Burberry. I mean, I I hate luxury sneakers like this in general because it's just a it, basic ass sneaker. Yeah. And but yeah, and I I can I I can already tell by looking at these these are probably the least comfortable sneakers you'll ever put on your yeah. fucking feet. That's so um, what they you see the one that they're using right there. Yeah, this looks like oh they use it for almost eh, not every but a lot of luxury brands use that type of sole. And it's not a good soul. Like, no. You know, it, it just doesn't wear in well. No, and it reminds me of my, my B23s they, they, where they are terribly uncomfortable, and I can already tell, yeah, the Burberry, whack. Uh, the, oh, yeah, these are the ones we were talking about. Yeah, the Flyknit Racers. Yeah. These are pretty sick. And I didn't even know these are two-tone shoes where, like, the inside, the medial part of the shoe is, like, black with a pink swoosh. Yeah, these, dude, these are sick. Yeah, yeah, I actually do like these a little bit better now that I see them on foot. Yeah, would I wear them with those skinnies? Probably not. But the only thing, <laughs> him exposing the ankle. <laughs> yeah, the the only thing I don't like about racers. Yeah, is when I wear them, it I feel like they make my feet look really small. I could see that they look like little nubs. I have a yeah. pa- I have a couple pairs of racers, and I don't like how they make my feet look. I but mean, I mean, those almost add like what an inch on both sides of your feet just wearing those. Yeah, so it's like. Or any Jordan out there makes your foot look half a size or even a full size bigger because yeah, that's it's almost true. like a boot like shoe. Well, not like a boot as in like a boot boot, but like mm. the feeling, the heaviness of it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, no, this is basically like wearing your socks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this one, I, 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 I like these a lot. These are, these, yeah, these are sick. I mean, I really liked a lot of the lunar stuff that they were doing back in the day. Yeah, me too. I, I don't know what happened to it because I think they just were like, let's just clear that technology out of the way and mm-hmm. make room for something else but i was a fan when the what was it the lunar trainers or what were they called the loon yeah lunar lunar epics lunar um, yeah there was some, a lot of some, stuff yeah they even had the lunar chuckas do you remember those yeah i had a pair of those yeah and i would wear them all the time when i was in college um the fabric is very light like literally probably like what half an ounce to an ounce at yeah, most. yeah like it was something like that such yeah. a light shoe but yeah, th- these razors are sick. Okay, uh, last but not least, let's go through some releases. So yeah, let's look at what's uh, the let's, where was where did I have that tab? Stuff. So I had it on Soul Collector. Did I close it? Damn it! Hold on a sec. Uh, so oh, here we go. Was that Soul Collector or was it Sneaker News? There we go. No, it was Soul Collector. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, so these are the releases for um, this next week or so. Uh, so today, the Amominier Jordan 2 is released. Um, for me, I, I was, I don't know, I'm not really feeling them. Uh, just, yeah, they, they, they just, I don't know, they're, the crack leather, everything I've seen about the ones makes me think, like, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm good off of these. I think the fact that they released shortly after that the Union 2s came out makes these less desirable because the Union 2s, I think, whether you like them or you don't, you have to admit that they're pretty original in terms of the colorway, the construction, the material that was used in those shoes mm-hmm. to the point where I'm like, if I had the choice between that and this, I would get the Union's. <laughs> Yeah, and and even too, I I I feel like the 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 timeline bef- from when I first heard rumors about these to mm-hmm. when they were released was so quick too. Like they just kind of just dropped out of nowhere, and it's yeah. I don't know. It seems I don't know. They seem kind of like like an afterthought for me. I I don't know. I I I'm I'm not I'm not in, I'm not very interested in those. Mm-hmm. Um, these dunk lows, however, I really like these. The Dunkle Women's Rose Whisper. I really like this sort of like ash pearl 
sort of color on these dunks. Is that suede or leather? I think it's leather, right? I think so. Yeah. Let's find out. I think it's leather. Oh, yeah, it's leather. It's not a bad shoe. Yeah, this is a very nice shoe. Yeah. I like them. It's almost like, yeah, what, what you said, that like that dusty pink yeah. type of colorway. Yeah. I can see people wearing those. I will say a lot of the dunk colorways for women have been fire lately. Yeah. Like, dude, I was at, dude, we were at the outlets this, this past, um, fucking on, when was it, on Monday, Memorial Day? Yeah. And there was a jacket that would go absolutely perfect with this and i almost bought it i was like i don't i don't need another jacket but now like i don't Do know you know the brand it, no it, it was oh we were at the nike outlets oh sorry nike okay my bad yeah nike outlet. okay it, dude it was it was super super nice but ah, man yeah actually i'm gonna have to send an alarm to oh, okay. tomorrow these are these are sick i like them yeah i mean hopefully it's an easy cop you know yeah uh for dunks uh, again yeah, almost almost never okay so these <sighs> nike air trainer ones photon dust i have never heard of the nike air trainer one until the 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 fucking the Travis Scott collabs that came yeah. out, with, he, he had two different colorways of these, and since then, like I've been starting to see them more, or maybe they were always there, but I just never really paid attention to them. <laughs> this is originally a football shoe, right, for like training, I think. It, uh, I, I think I, that's I, what it was. I, I believe it, yeah. Um, or I don't know what kind of utility the shoe really had, but the whole idea is it's a bulky shoe. The strap in the front is not bad. Um. The colorway is not bad, I will say, for that shoe. It's like a sage green. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a sage green, grayish sort of like. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I I I can't imagine what when or where I would ever wear this. Actually, for most anything like gray, yeah. I've noticed when I buy them, I almost immediately regret them if it's mostly gray like this because it's just like it's such an odd color for my wardrobe and like so i used to have the serena the serena uh williams off-white blazers yeah which are like a wolf gray with the gradient on the heel and i did and i and i never once wore them because the gray was such a weird shade of gray that like i i didn't know what to wear it with and also too that the paint could easily chip too on that mm -hmm. heel because i if i looked at the used photos on go and i was like you know what i just ended up selling them too and, and actually made a little bit of money off of that but mm -hmm. I don't know. These are these, and that's what these kind of remind me of. That that sort of gray. That I don't know what I would wear these with. So, yeah, it's a hard shoe because I think it doesn't stand out as much, and yeah. it blends in too much depending on what you wear. Yeah. No. Yeah. These but these, these are a pass. It, is, it does have like a green hue to it, which I think you could use. You can pull it off, but the fact that it's all one color, I think it's I, what makes it harder. I think. Yeah. I think that's what it is for me too. It's it's very one 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 tone. dimension. Yes. Yeah. Uh, don't know what these are. Uh, Jordan six red red orders. I don't think I have a single pair of sixes. I I like I like the infrareds, like the the essentially the black version of these. If the if all this uh, white were black, um, I'm not really into like predominantly white shoes like this because of how dirty I get them, which is kind of stupid because I I just got a pair of or I have a pair of Jordan ones that I'm wearing this summer that are um, the metallic purple, which is literally all white but with like a purple accents but mm -hmm. i don't know not, not really into sixes yeah i feel like with this one why buy this when you could buy the ogs yeah yeah exactly um not saying it's a bad shoe and that i'm not gonna see people wearing it i just don't see anything special to it you yeah know? it's kind of like uh, it's like red oreo like what the fuck about this screams Oreo? Yeah, I don't know. I'm confused just looking at these. I, I, I imagine it's probably just that little like spackle, which is just like such a like. All right, cool. It's almost like, like a paint splatter shoe, though. Like, what what does that have to do with? What yeah. I mean, then again, Nike didn't name it this. Someone else did. I'm sure. Yeah. But sometimes it but, tells you people try too hard to put names. Yes. You know. But so, somebody. But it, so yeah, somebody named it. But at Nike, several people signed off on like a. Yeah, that's a red Oreo. Sure, why not? I don't know. See, and, and that's what gets me. If they had, like, maybe some, like, red accents or something, I don't know. I don't know. I, and even then, actually, I I'm, I don't even think I would even get it then. Yeah. But who knows? This is a um, pass. And the, the last one, so the Jordan Gray, Jordan uh, One Highs, the Gray Fogs, these are kind of sick. Uh, these remind me of the ones that came out, I think it was, like, a year or a year and a half ago that... Mm -hmm were essentially just like this too but they had a red collar and mm -hmm. then the, the same sort of like that was the the what were they called i don't know a, a smoke rays smoke ray yeah 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 so looking at this this looks like a cracked leather for the the black black is a cracked leather 
See him in the swoosh, and it's got like a suede. Suede. And then suede what? Heel, nubuck and then, leather on the top? Yeah, this collar? might be nubuck or just like a smooth leather, maybe? That's so weird. Yeah, a lot of mix. And then this collar is also, it looks like the crack leather. They're kind of they're kind of nice, but they kind of just remind me of the shadows. I have a hard time with the amount of material choices they put in this. Mm-hmm. It's like, if you're going to use like suede, just use suede. If you're going to use leather, just use leather. Um, or just suede and leather, like the fact that they have like three different, the cracked leather, the smooth leather, and yeah, it's ki- kind of a kind of a lot. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, from afar though, no one's gonna care. Yeah. You're you're gonna care when you see it. Well, if you're if you're about you know if you care about that kind of stuff, then yeah. But for the most part, I feel like this shoe itself, it's not a bad shoe, but personally, I wouldn't cop it. Yeah, this is a pass for me too. Nothing doesn't seem like anything great for me. Yeah. I, if I see it in hand and the leather's really nice, maybe um, maybe I'll be considered. But I would say like this this just looks like a I don't know no. special. In in my mind, I'm gonna imagine. Actually, no, that's that's probably not right. I was gonna say these will probably end up like the brotherhoods that they kind of sit. I don't think mm-hmm. these are gonna sit. I'm 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 sure these will sell, but but like I'm not crazy about them. And then of course the last but not least. Um, for the next week, the Hello Kitty Prestos, which I was able to get a pair, I think, when they released their Undefeated. I really like these. Yeah. And, dude, especially seeing them in, in hand, like, these are sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a shoe to keep and definitely a shoe for the summer, especially since things are warming up. Um, I mean, we went through a lot of the details earlier in the episode, but I think one of the things that I really liked about the shoe, again, it's that, the... That heel cup, yeah. yeah. It's sick. These Prestos are probably my favorite one of this out of this entire, uh, this entire release. Cool, man. Got anything else coming up for the rest of the rest of anything? Any events in the next couple of weeks or anything like that? Uh, no, other than going to SF for my birthday. Other than that, I don't really have anything else in mind. But you know, summer's coming up, so things will for sure start picking up. That's right. Very well, soon. Well, once you start getting some gigs, uh, let me know, and then we'll we'll plug it here in the show. And uh, otherwise, yeah. cool, man. Thanks for dropping by. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for. All having right, me. everyone. Thanks for joining. All right. See you guys next time.